Today I'm going to read you the book, Those Shoes by Mary Beth Fultz. She's the author, she wrote the words, illustrated by Noah Z. Jones. Illustrated means he did the pictures. Here we have leaves in the air that are not green. I bet you can guess the season. Did you guess fall? That's correct. Those Shoes by Mary Beth Bolts, illustrated by Noah C. Jones. There's our main character. In the beginning of a story, you find out where and when it is happening. So you understand how things are happening in the story. And in this story, we know it's fall, and because of this giant poster on this giant building with other giant buildings in the background, we know we're in the city. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here. Just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. You can always get what you need, but sometimes you can't always get what you want, can you? Brandon T comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. Then one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size, Velcro, like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. Hmm, do you see what the kids are doing? When I came back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs, and so do Terrence, Brandon T, and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes, but when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. Now, if I turn this around, you can see his spelling list. He had to spell some names of places South Africa, Hawaii, Ohio, England, and San Francisco. And he spells them correctly, and something else spells correctly too. S-H-O-E-S. -E the first letter of each of those places spells shoes. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I've got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough, you never know. I think the Grandma really wants to get him those shoes, even though she knows they might not be able to afford it. She must feel bad about how bad he's been feeling. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. I think when it says she sits down heavy, she must be feeling disappointed. I want you to say that word, disappointed. Count the syllables, disappointed. Did you get four? I got four too. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. 
black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is a third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. They're excited because they think they might have found the answer. They think they might have found those shoes. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoes. Oh, Jeremy, she says. I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. Sometimes we try to make something work even if it isn't quite working out. This is his room. He has a nice window and I spy a dinosaur. What else do you see? Did you say scarf? Did you say book? Shoes? Do you see that in the closet? Boots? A sock that should go in the laundry basket? What do you see here? Did you say dinosaurs? Did anybody notice the soccer ball player on the wall? At home a few days later, Grandma put a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfrey's to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. see that tape on the bottom of his shoe, can't you? That's Antonio. It's kind of nice that he didn't laugh at his friend, isn't it? We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. Look at what he keeps looking at keeps noticing about his friend. I think when we're kind, we notice things that we want to help fix. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug, my hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Tell what you think should happen now. Let's see if you're right. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes right in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there's snow. 
Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then that I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots, new black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. Wow, looks like those boots are pretty fast that grandma bought him. Sometimes it's important to remember that if we have what we need, that's a really, really good thing. And we can even still help others because we have enough. I hope to read you another story soon, friends. Bye-bye.